You can't die, Mommy. You can't. Oh, sweetie, don't say that. Don't even think that. I saw the tape. You said that you were sick, but you, you didn't want to tell me because you thought I'd worry. You said that if I saw it, if that if I was watching it, that I would already know that you were in heaven. And, and I know what that means. It means that you're dying. Okay, Junior. Let's see what's got you so freaked out, shall we? What was that? Liza? Yeah, yeah, Dad, it's me. Let me in. What's going on? Chandler, Enterprises go belly up? No, no, no. I came in the belly references, shall we? I need to use your bathroom. That's why you came over here. No, no, no. I have news. It's going to knock your socks off. <laughs> what, no, what, no, wait a minute. You can't just, like, come in here and then drop a bombshell like that and go running off to the bathroom. Yeah, well, you've never been pregnant. That's a fair statement. OK, look, I knew I I, I, I tell, told you I would mind my business and I wanted to respect that and all that, but I finally figured it out, and I can't not tell you. you can't not tell me what? Well, I know what's going on with Dixie. I know her secret, OK? Liza! I sincerely hope this is some temporary side effect of your pregnancy, because this Dixie thing is becoming an obsession Are with you. You, you know that, right? No, I'm not. Oh. It's like you've gone hard of hearing, you know? Or you're delusional from some hormone spike. Please try and understand this once and for all. Dixie and I are through. Are you done? Yes. Dixie's been keeping a secret. Oh, I, no, no, what? no. I don't care. If she's got a secret, it's her secret. It belongs to her. It's got nothing to do with me. Now, wait a second. I, I have the floor. Good. You be quiet and you listen. Me be quiet. I figured out that there was something going on with Dixie, and I know what it is, and I can prove it. I am now serious. It. No, no, no. This is... Listen to me. Please listen to me, okay? If Dixie has got some secret, it's none of my business. It's none of your business. So just keep your... Rape your, like, investigative skills to yourself, you know? Use them someplace where they're needed, like, like at the station. Dad, I know this is gonna hurt you, but you need to know the truth. She is very sick. Dixie is very, very sick. I am so sorry that you saw that tape. I never should have made it. It was, it was, it was too soon for anything like that. On the tape, it said you were sick, and, and Dad told me you were sick, and said that you might not get well. I know he said that, and he shouldn't have. He got you all upset for no reason. But why would he tell me something like that if it wasn't true? Um, I'm not saying that your father's a liar. It's, uh, I'm, it's just, he means Mom, well. I'm not a baby anymore. I know, I know what's going on. But, I mean, why can't you just tell me? You're right. You're right, I should tell you the whole deal. That you're sick? And that, and that you're gonna die? No, that, no. That, that I am sick. I am sick. But I am going to get better. I made that tape because there's just well, the tiniest little infinitesimal chance that I, I might not make it. But I am going to make it, OK? I promise you that. No, you, you can't promise that. Only, only God can. You're right. You're right about that. But I've been talking to God a lot lately. and. I've been asking him for a lot of help. I've been pestering him quite a bit, and he wants to, me to get off his back, you know? Honey. Honey, look at me. Come on, look at me. Look at me. I love you more than anything in this entire world, in this universe, in all of the galaxies, known or unknown. There is no better reason for me to get better 
than my desire to keep looking into this beautiful face that I am looking at right now. I want to live. Plus, I have the best doctor that I could possibly get. But most important for you to know is that I'm going to use every ounce of my willpower to get better. I'm using everything I have within me to, to kick this thing out of my body so that I can be here with you. Do you believe me? Is Dr. Joe taking care of you? No, his name is Dr. Hayward, and he is very, very good. And he promises me that I'm going to get better, and I believe him. He's made people much, much sicker than I am get well. <laughs> okay? So there's nothing for you to worry about. Okay? Okay. You don't sound okay. I'm just a little scared, I guess. I'm scared, too. <laughs> You're being so brave. It makes me feel so much braver. You know, you're right. You're not a little boy anymore. Um, Mom? Who are you calling? I'm calling somebody who can put all of your fears to rest. As soon as I got your message, what's going on? You don't sound like you have shortness of breath. Are you in any pain? Uh, no, not physically. Um, it's my son. Oh, I see. Is there some place else that you'd like to talk, or...? Uh, no, we can talk right here. Um, my, my son knows that I'm ill. And, um, I was trying to explain to him how I think I'm, I'm not gonna die. Then it occurred to me that, um, you could explain that much better than I could, so, um, would you, would, would you mind telling my son how you're gonna fix me all up? I'd be happy to. Can you really fix my mom? You're darn right I can, and I will. We'll hold you to that, doctor. Give me a break. That's ridiculous. Dixie was here not too long ago. She was fine. She didn't have the sniffles. Look, whatever it is, it's serious. <sighs> All right, whatever. What's your point? You're going to come barging in here in the, in the middle of the night, try to scare me out to death by announcing that Dixie is deathly ill, and you can't even give me a name for no, this mystery no, illness? No, I can't give you a name. Do you know why? Because there is no illness, which leads us to the question, why are you doing this? You know, if you would just take this seriously and you would listen to I me. I don't really. have to listen to you because I went through it myself not too long ago. The day that we saw Dixie go into Hayward's office. You thought something was up? I thought something was up. So I asked her, are you sick? She said, no, I'm not sick. Of course, I didn't believe her, so I even coerced Jake into going through her records. You know what he found? An anxiety attack. Well, she lied. I confronted her about that very same thing. She told me I was, uh, I was getting into her business and to, to butt out. Awesome, you're two for two. When are you gonna get the message? What do you need, divine words on a stone tablet? It was an anxiety attack. That's it, that, that's it, there's mm -hmm. nothing else. You wanna tell me why David Hayward, world-renowned cardiologist, is still treating her? He told you that. No, he didn't tell me that. Uh, but when I told David that Junior was missing, he wondered how she was taking it. I said, well, you know, understandably, she's very upset. He dropped everything. He practically pushed me out the door so he could run to her side. He said he was going to go see Dixie? No, he didn't say that, but I would bet the station that's exactly where he went. All you have to do is believe me, and you need to check this out. All My Children will be back in a moment here on ABC.
No, Liza, I'm not sticking my nose in where it doesn't belong. I'm telling you, Dixie was just here. She looked fine, she sounded fine, she acted just fine. You know what? She's not fine. Why can't you leave it alone? Why, I can't. Why, uh, why are you meddling in my life? Because this is my fault. No, it's not. Tad, if I hadn't come between the two of you all those years ago, you'd still be together, you'd still be married, you'd still be happy. Honey, with all due respect, get over it, okay? I have gotten over it, Dixie's gotten over it, everybody has except you. Fact is, Dixie and I are just plain over. Nobody would have to get over anything if it wasn't for me. That was years ago. If it makes you feel better, Dixie and I tried to take another shot at it not too long ago. You know, we missed. That had nothing to do with you. It was just me and Dixie, one on one. She called it quits permanently. So do us all a favor, go home. The game is over. I tell you, I don't, I don't get you. I mean, you love her. She's your life. Are, are you, are you just stubborn or, or can you just turn your feelings on and off just Liza, like that? Liza, this has got nothing to do with my The feelings. hell it doesn't. What do you want me to say, huh? What do you want to hear, that I love her? Okay, fine, Liza, I still love her. As much as I ever did, maybe even more. And I sure as hell wish I didn't because she's made it perfectly clear that she doesn't want me in her life and it's killing me. Can't you see that? Now, your mom has a condition known as pericarditis. Now, what that is, is that the lining of the heart, that's this part right here, it becomes inflamed or swollen, okay? Now, she could have shortness of breath or her heart might flutter a bit. That can be very serious, but it's also treatable. That's why I'm making sure that your mother's on certain medications that can help to alleviate the inflammation, the swelling. Do you understand that so far? Yeah, it's kind of like when I sprained my ankle. Got all big and swollen. We had to take a couple aspirin to take the swelling down. <laughs> Smart kid. Amazing. Now, the one thing about this condition is that you can't control it. The only thing you can do is monitor it very closely, and that's exactly what I'm doing. It's, it's not curable? Oh, no, it, it's curable, and I'm going to cure it. Now, the people here will tell you that I'm really not much on bragging, but um, I happen to be the best heart doctor in this country. And I am on top of this thing, Junior. Okay, I'm keeping very close tabs on your mom. I performed heart transplants and all forms of open heart surgery, and I've made a lot of people well. And I'm gonna tell you what I've told your mom. Nobody dies on me. Really? You can take that to the bank. I believe you. Good kid. I'm so glad that you understand. Oh, thank you so much. As I said, I'm happy to. Here, why don't you hold on to this? Who knows, maybe someday you'll be a heart doctor just like me. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Except, I still don't understand why you made that tape. Oh, uh, You know how I'm always sort of buying a birthday and Christmas presents, you know, ahead of time? Well, I was just, I was getting way, way ahead of myself. I'm so sorry I scared you. Why don't um, you give me the tape and then I'll erase it right now, okay? Okay, it's, it's in my backpack. Okay, where's your backpack? Oh, nuts, I left it at Tad's. Oh, okay. Are you sure? No. Okay. Um, well, maybe I, I should go get that then. Uh, right now. Um, Adam, you, you're going to be here, right? Yes, of course. All right. Um, Dr. Hayward, thank you so much for coming. Baby, are you going to be all right? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll see you soon. Oh, Brayden, hi. Um, I could use your help. Yeah, you got it. What's up? Um, come with me. Uh, Junior, I'd like to talk to your mommy's doctor alone for just a moment. Why don't you have Lucretia make us a plate of sandwiches? I bet you're hungry after your adventure. Yeah. Okay. 
Goodbye, Dr. Hayward. It's a pleasure meeting you, Adam, Jr. Mm. Be with you in just a few minutes, son. What now? Would you like me to draw your very own picture? Don't think for a minute that I don't care about Dixie. I can just shut her out of my life like some light switch that I turn on and off. Pure and simple fact is I can't go more than two minutes without thinking about her. I adore the woman. I'm always going to adore her. Mm -hmm. Now the amazing thing, when I really thought we had a chance, you know, shot at a life together, I was so hopeful. I, I crawled right on that, out on that limb all by myself. Dixie cut it off and threw it in my face. No hope, no life, no chance. I'm really sorry. Well, if that's the case, then why can't you just leave me alone, honey? Why do you, why do you constantly have to bring up her name? Why do you insist on forcing me through more of that pain? It's like torture. You know, Jake's gotten it through his skull. Why can't you? I didn't know that what I was doing was hurting you. Please forgive me. You know, I knew that interfering would shake things up a bit, but I thought it would be for the good. Yeah, I understand. And, and you know, it's no joke, these hormones. I can be very practical, and then one minute... Liza, Liza, it's okay. Forget about it, honey. I really want to. Okay. Um, I won't even mention, uh, you know who. I appreciate that. But while you're here, I, uh, I look through the tapes you sent over from the studio, and I'll have my recommendations on your desk first thing tomorrow afternoon. I think there's some good stuff over there. I think we should pursue it. Okay. Um, I'll take some of them back with me, and, and we can talk tomorrow. Are you really okay? Yeah. I want to get out of here. I'll come back to use your bathroom later. Yeah, just leave a quarter. <laughs> See?